Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the HPE ProLiant DL360 Gen 9 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on RAID. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the HPE ProLiant DL360 Gen 9 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything that's useful, hey, click that like and smash that subscribe. We'll hop in. Uh, this video is going to be specifically focused on RAID. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to do a close-up in a minute. We're going to show you a few of the different types of RAID. Uh, you're going to be able to see the mezzanine-style card versus the PCIe card, which are a little bit different. I personally like the mezzanine card just because you don't have to use a PCIe slot for it. And there is a dedicated spot for your mezzanine card. So that's my personal preference. Um, but we're going to put up a chart and we're going to show you all the differences and break down uh, the compatible options of RAID and show you the different RAID levels, the cache, if it's hardware or software, the PCIe version, and all that good stuff. Then at the end, we're actually going to install both versions and show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to put one into your system. So let's just go ahead and hop in. All right, so I have my ESD gear on, so we are safe to handle the parts. So we laid out a couple of the options here, or really a few of the options here, and so uh, the three together right here, these are your mezzanine style cards that, as I mentioned, I'm a big fan of uh, because there is a carved out section that we will show you in a minute in your 360 Gen 9, and you don't have to use a PCIe slot, whereas uh, the, the options back here are your PCIe version. Both are, are great, great options, but did want to point out the advantage of using the mezzanine card is that you don't have to waste one of your PCIe slots, but again, all great options. So, and one thing I did want to note before we put up the chart is that you do need to make sure uh, when you order these that sometimes the batteries don't come with them. Uh, so if you do need batteries, just make sure that uh, whoever you're getting them from, that you order them properly. So let's go ahead and put up our chart of some of the different RAID options as well as some of the HBA options. So uh, first things first, let's start with our software RAID. Our software RAID is an HPE B140i. It is going to offer RAID levels of 0, 1, 1 plus 0, 5, and 10. There's no actual cache, so what it does is it uses the system memory um, to basically act as a cache, uh, but there's no real cache, of course. Uh, there's no SAS support, and it supports up to 3 gigabit per second for SATA. The PCI Gen is not available, and of course it is a software RAID. The next one that is on our list is the P440AR. That's going to offer RAID levels of 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, 50, 60, 1 triple, and 10 triple. It's going to have 2 gigabytes cache. It's going to offer 12 gigabit per second for SAS and 6 gigabit per second for SATA. It is a PCIe 3.0 and it is a hardware RAID. Next up on our list is the P440. This is going to offer RAID levels of 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, 50, 60, 1 triple, and 10 triple. It's going to be 4 gigabytes of cache. It's going to be the same drive speeds and PCIe, which is 12 for SAS and 6 for SATA, and PCIe 3.0, and of course it is a hardware RAID. Next up is, an, is the P840 AR. It's going to be uh, RAID levels of 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, 50, 60, 1 triple, and 10 triple. It's going to offer 2 gigabytes of cache, and it's going to be 12 for SAS and 6 for SATA, PCIe 3.0, and hardware RAID, of course. Next up on our list is the regular P840, which is going to be RAID levels of 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, 50, 60, 1 triple and 10 triple. It's going to be 4 gigabit, four gigabytes of cache, and it's going to be 12 gigabit for SAS and 6, 6 gigabit for SATA, and it's going to be PCI 3.0 again, and it's going to be a hardware RAID. Now we're going to go over to our HBAs, which is going to be the H240 AR, which is going to be RAID levels of 0, 1, and 5. There's no cache, and it's going to be 12 for SAS, 6 for SATA, PCIe 3.0 hardware. And the next up is going to be the H240 HBA. It's going to be RAID levels of 0, 1, 5, and 10. It's going to be no cache again, and it's going to be 12 for SAS, 6 for SATA, PCIe 3.0 hardware once again. And the last on our list is the H241 HBA. It's going to be RAID levels of 0, 1, 5, no cache, 12 for SAS, 6 for SATA, 3.0 for the PCIe, and it's going to be a hardware. So now that we know a little bit more about the different options and the uh, different types of cards that we can use, let's go ahead and show you how to install them. And at the end, we'll go, go ahead and actually configure RAID 5 for you. All right, I have my ESD gear on. We are safe to open our machine. Uh, one of the things I wanted to point out, uh, this is going to be a pretty simple install as a whole. All you're going to need is your T1 
screwdriver so this is not a regular Phillips head you will need the T15 uh, that is what will actually go onto the card right here to screw it into the board you could technically use a T10 it's a little small um, it'll work but the T15 is the ideal size so all right let's go ahead and toss these to the side make sure this is set to unlock lift up the top pretty much like any machine you've been in before so where we're going to install this is right here. So what we're going to need to do, you can even see our cables are already ready, and they ran to the back plane, so we are all set. So what we're going to do is on the back right here, we are simply going to plug this in, and then at the same time, we want to line up our holes and our screws. So this will, again, be a pretty easy overall. So let's just come right in, get this all lined up perfectly. So this will go right through the hole everything's lined up here you'll also see uh, this peg is also keeping it for the carved out notch here and then just gonna simply screw it down so it's uh, again a very easy install as a whole um, won't take a ton of time in real time it'll take you just a few minutes to uh, to open the machine up and to screw everything down and as soon as we are finished with this we will actually show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to configure your RAID. So that will be what is up next. So, all right, so now we've got it, everything screwed down. You will notice this says port one, port two. So we are just going to uh, plug in our port. So port one, port two, and then I'm just gonna make sure it looks like this popped up a little bit. So just make sure our cables are all still nice and flush. And that's it, that's all you have to do to install it. So now we're gonna show you how to configure RAID. Hey, this is Ben with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to configure RAID. Specifically in this video, we're going to be configuring RAID 1, but if you wanted to configure RAID 5, the steps shown in this video are going to be very similar. I would also like to mention that if you are configuring a different RAID level, such as RAID 5, you will have a different minimum drive requirement. RAID 5, for instance, is going to utilize three drives or more, while RAID 1 is going to use two drives. So depending on what RAID level you want to go ahead and move along with, just go ahead and research what requirements there are. But if you want to go ahead and follow along with us to configure RAID 1, you just need to install two drives of the same capacity into your server. And then once you've done that, we're all good to get started. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and power on your server. And during post, you want to press F10. Once the menu loads, we want to go ahead and click on HPE Smart Storage Administrator. Doing so, we're going to be loaded into the Smart Storage Administrator menu, so it may take a few minutes till it loads fully. So while we wait, we're just going to go ahead and fast forward, and then we'll go ahead and pick it back up. Once the menu is loaded, if you look on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see where it says Array Controllers, and then we can see our Smart HBA H240AR. This is the RAID controller that we currently have installed. If you have another one installed, it will show a different name. We're going to go ahead and click on the RAID controller that we want to use. Once we click on that, a menu is going to pop up on the right hand side. We want to go ahead and click on this configure button. Afterwards, we'll have a few more options pop up. So we want to click on this option that is at the very top that says create array. And then here you will see all the drives that we have installed on our server. We have two 160 gigabyte SATA SSDs that we're going to be using. We want our RAID array to span across these two drives, so we want to click on this checkbox that says select all. And then once our drives are selected, we want to go to the bottom right and click on create array. So this screen will pull up a few more options. As you can see at the very top where it says RAID level, we can go ahead and pick between RAID 0 and 1. We're going to go ahead and leave it selected at 1, and then we're going to go ahead and leave everything selected as is, and then we can go ahead and click on Create Logical Drive. Next, it'll ask us if we want to continue, so we can just go ahead and click on Yes. And then now, we can just go ahead and click on Finish. Now, if we go ahead and look on the left-hand side of the screen, we can see where it says Logical Devices, and we're going to go ahead and click on that. And in here, it's going to go ahead and show us our RAID array. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and reboot our server. So we can click on this X in the top right-hand corner of the screen, and then it'll ask us if we're sure that we want to exit the application. So we're going to click on OK. And then now we can press this power button 
that is on the top right of the screen. And then we're going to click reboot. And that's it. We have successfully created a RAID array with our newly installed RAID controller. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if you want to do this with a different RAID level, you can follow these same exact steps and you should be able to do so. Just make sure you do the research on how many drives you need for your desired RAID level and you should be good to go. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments below. And if you're looking to purchase a custom built server, we have HP, Dell, Supermicro, IBM, and Cisco in stock. If you have a desired configuration, go ahead and shoot that over to us and we'll be more than happy to help you out. And if you just want to purchase individual components such as CPUs, memory, you know, hard drives, solid state drives, RAID controllers, network cards, we got a ton of those in stock. So whatever you want, go ahead and email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. Anyways, guys, thanks for stopping by. Mm -hmm.